Hey guys and welcome to Howdy Gastro. In today's video we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic and that is schistosomiasis which is also commonly known as Bellasia. So let's get started. So what is schistosomiasis? Schistosomiasis, also called Bellasia, is an acute and chronic parasitic infection caused by blood flukes of the genus Schistosoma. There are three main types of schistosomiasis, Schistosoma mansoni, Schistosoma hematobium, and Schistosoma japanicum, which all cause illnesses in humans. The disease is characterized by the inflammation of the intestines, bladder, liver, and other organs. The disease is ordinarily contracted by working, bathing, or swimming in water populated by snails that carry the worms. So from this definition of schistosomiasis, we get that it's a parasitic infection which is caused by these blood flukes or worms of the schistosoma species. So the three main ones that are actually responsible for infecting humans are schistosoma hematobium, which actually mostly infiltrates the urinary tract we also have Schistosoma mansoni, which primarily infects the GI tract, and Schistosoma japonicum, which also mostly infiltrates the GI tract. So once this parasite enters the body, it actually infiltrates various organ systems. So some of the most common ones, as we mentioned, are the bladder, the liver, and the intestines. And one usually contracts this disease by either working bathing or swimming in freshwater rivers or in dams that are populated by snails that actually carry the parasite. So in this image on the left side of my screen, we see what these blood flukes look like in their adult forms and then we also see what the egg form looks like for each of them. So now that we know the basics of schistosomiasis, let's take a closer look at how one actually contracts this disease. So people become infected when the larval forms of the parasite are released by freshwater snails, which penetrate the skin during contact with infested water. So transmission occurs when people suffering from schistosomiasis contaminate freshwater sources with their excreta, which means their feces, which contain parasitic eggs, which will hatch in the water. In the body, the larvae developed into adult schistosomes, and the adult worms live in the blood vessels where the females release more eggs. Some of the eggs are passed out of the body in the feces or in the urine to continue the parasite's life cycle and others become trapped in the body tissues causing immune reactions and progressive damage to the organs. So if we take a closer look at this image on the left side of my screen, we see how one actually contracts the disease. So first of all, the eggs are shed from the infected human in the feces. So here we have those three species again. We have the S. mansoni, S. japanicum, and the S. hematobium species. So the eggs actually hatch and release the mercidia, which is just a fancy word which means that it's a larvae which is actually capable of swimming. So once the mercidia reach the snails, they actually penetrate the snail tissues. And here, the sporocytes develop in the snail, which means successive generations. And then we have free swimming, saccharia, which is released from the snail into the water. And these saccharia are also free-swimming larval stage fluke, which penetrate the skin of the human. And the saccharia lose their tails during the penetration and become schistosomulae. They reach the circulation and then travel to the liver. And here we have the migration to the portal blood in the liver and the maturation into adults. And then we have the paired adult worms, so the male and female worms, which actually migrate to the mesenteric venules of the bowel and rectum and they lay eggs that circulate in the liver and are shed into the stool and they also migrate to the venous plexus of the bladder and here the eggs are shed into the urine. So as I mentioned before, it's usually the S. mansoni and S. japonicum worms that migrate to the bowel and rectum and usually the S. hematobium worms will migrate to the bladder and here the eggs will be shed into the urine. So in this image on the top right side of my screen, we actually have the microscopic image of what the schistosoma eggs look like on a microscopic aspect. So this is basically these eggs here which are able to be seen from stool or urine samples collected from the patient. So now let's talk about the signs and symptoms of schistosomiasis. So if you remember in the first slide we said that the disease actually has an acute infection stage or a chronic infection stage. So the acute infection will happen within days of becoming infected and the individual will develop a rash or itchy skin 
and approximately three to eight weeks after the infection, the individual will experience fever, abdominal pain, especially in the liver and spleen area, bloody diarrhea or blood in the stools, cough, malaise, headache, rash, and body aches. And all these symptoms actually arise due to the infiltration of these worms and larvae into the different organ systems. So the initial rash or itchy skin develops due to that initial penetration of skin from the parasite. And then thereafter, the parasite will begin to infiltrate the internal system and we will have the development of fever and pain, especially in the GI tract system, as well as the urinary tract system. So over time, a chronic infection can develop and this happens usually after months or years with the infection. And if the parasites affect the liver or the intestine, symptoms may include diarrhea and constipation, blood in the feces, intestinal ulcers, liver fibrosis, and portal hypertension or high blood pressure around the digestive system. And if the parasites affect the urinary system, they may also be blood in the urine, painful urination, a higher risk of bladder cancer, and over time, anemia can develop, and in rare cases, the parasite may affect the central nervous system. So over time, due to that infiltration of blood flukes throughout the body, they can travel to different areas of the body and infiltrate the different areas. So the central nervous system can actually be infiltrated over some time. So how can one go about diagnosing schistosomiasis? So stool sampling with thick fecal smears and urine concentration tests are used to determine if any schistosoma eggs are present. And we can also do blood tests and more recently polymerase chain reaction tests, which can help confirm the diagnosis. But positive results may only indicate a past exposure. However, these tests are not usually positive until the patient has been infected for about six to eight weeks because it takes time for the eggs to develop and stimulate the immune system response. So this is actually the microscopic aspect, as we saw in that little video that was playing earlier. This is actually the microscopic aspect of what the schistosoma eggs look like. And we can see in the different species of schistosomiasis, we have slightly different shapes in the eggs. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of schistosomiasis. So the drug of choice to treat this infection is praziquantel, which is an antiparasitic drug and is usually given in two to three doses taken orally over the course of one day. And that brings us to the end of this presentation on schistosomiasis. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.